Peace and Power back live with Radio Radio. And that's Radio Radio on UrbanNationRadio.com. If you're just tuning, joining us, this is a Malcolm X celebration of his life uh, episode. And uh, 38 weeks strong, right on his birthday, May 19th, every year. And this is the 90th, 9-0. And um, we just showed a couple of videos. Uh, one of it well, wasn't one of the interviewed. It's it's titled um, like I said the best best uh, best speech ever best speech <laughs> best speech ever. And then another w excerpt from the uh, movie by Spike Lee, um, Malcolm X. And so um, there was so much. There's so much that that came out of those two clips. Um, I think it warrants kind of going. Everybody kind of sharing what they got out of. Uh, one or both of those clips, and then we can, uh, as we continue the discussion. Yeah, um, well, the second one is just show how when you don't control media, what they can do. I mean, they tell you what to think. Like, um, you know, people who are non-black or non-African American, which is another thing in itself. I mean, we don't even know what to call ourselves. Call ourselves Moors, Black, African American, Afro American, like... You know, we don't have any identity whatsoever. Um, and that that uh, clip just goes to show that when you don't control, they tell you what to think about yourself. Like a lot of people, you know, walk around here with low self-esteem. That's why we spend so much on cars and clothes and, you know, beauty, beauty products and creams and all of this. Because, I mean, you have such low self-esteem, but look what's been taught and what's been perpetuated throughout all of these years. Um, and I think that clip just goes to show that is that you know, I mean, it's in the dictionary, so it must be true, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, what, what, what said, he said, Life's not a dictionary, it's the source, <laughs> <laughs> same, same thing. But I see, I see what, um, the relevance of that comment. Um, from my perspective, the verse, the first clip I, I we included because it just showed how raw Malcolm X was, like. And we don't, we don't, we, nowadays we live in this politically correct time where it's like you can't say certain things or, you know, they'll take your, you know, all your followers will leave you or they'll have you on TV and pilot, trying to get you to apologize and stuff. And I yes, mean, Brian. here's a guy who said, you know, it's an airplane that crashed, it had some white people on it. And we got we to put things in context. In the day and age he was at, there was, there was this, this a huge divide, even more so than today. Um, and so... Again, even going back to his, you know, watching his, having his father getting killed by, you know, these uh, certain white people. And so he was, he had this, this immense anger. And so when he found out some white people down in the plane, he was like, I want more. I want that to happen more often. And I, again, it's not, it's not to say let's celebrate death. At the same time, it is to say that if, if something happens to my enemy or a person who I feel is oppressing me, that is positive for me. So, again, if a lion eats a zebra, it's all, it's all perspective. Who, who benefits? You know, if you're the zebra, you don't benefit. If you're the lion. You got lunch. Um, but then we look at the second clip and, and just going off of what, uh, to add to what, what Keith was saying, um, it goes to show what happens when, when we look at the word media. You know, media is another aspect of medium, and medium is something that allows energy to, to go from one form to the other. And so when we base our language off of a dictionary or off of what so and so said or what teacher said or what pastor said, um, we can get lost in a sauce sometimes. Um, but on a, on a positive note, that I, I, one of the things I like about that clip is it shows that no matter where you are in life, no matter what's going on with you, you can always find a positive aspect to it and you can actually grow from it. Mo most people nowadays that I've encountered go to prison or jail and come out either the same or worse off. Would you have a brother like Malcolm X? And again, it also, it also to me um, speaks volumes to how much we don't really control because Malcolm X needed his brother to see him and say, Hey, let me teach you something. Mm -hmm. Had that guy wasn't there, there would be no Malcolm X. And so, um, we, we all shape and mold each other, influence each other, but we also can't control who's, who's going to be in some room when we walk into it. And so it's really to express some um, that, uh, there's a lot of things that's going on divinely, um, that we, we just, we just have to have, know that it's everything that happens is as it should, so to speak. And, um, and just be, be be glad of who you are and where you are. And if you want to be the next person that creates change, just go be that person. Go seek it. And then when you walk into the room, there'll be that guy who 
it's saying, hey, come to get this real quick, and then you can transform yourself. But it's all about you deciding what you want for yourself. I'm sure Malcolm X went in there, and, and some some part of him decided that he 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 wanted to understand his situation more. And um, having his father work with Marcus Garvey again, it's, it's a certain elements to what made him Malcolm that uh, it makes him a whole being, just like whatever you've gone through makes you a whole person. I'm saying, I'm saying, uh, I guess the the something that uh, stuck out to me was uh, kind of touching on what what Info Keith said, Veggie backing off of that, the the dictionary, the the fact that. Uh, this brother, I mean, you see the first speech, you know, no matter how controversial what he was talking about was, whether you agree with it or not, the brother was elegant mm -hmm. and confident. And whatever he said, it just flowed effortlessly. You know, that doesn't happen overnight. That's not a, I wouldn't say that that's a God-given ability. I would say that that's something that you have to hone. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you can, argue, you can debate that, but... Sure, sure. Um, yeah, that's something that you have to practice. And then we kind of see in the second clip how it began. You know, you don't just start out with a, uh, you know, flowing, you know, eloquently speaking without having a strong vocabulary. This brother read the dictionary. Read the dictionary from A to Z, literally. Mm -hmm. You know, starting with aardvark. You know, so that was, that, and that was, the, that was the, the second point that I wanted to make. The power of... Uh, the discipline, the discipline that it takes uh, to 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 be great, often often comes with uh, to be being motivated by something that's that, that's often sometimes traumatic or very amazing. Either one, either, either one or the other. Is that they're powerful blessing? And these are how you look at it. You know, powerful blessing. You know, his history is. You know, his mother, his father. His fa many members of his family have been uh, victims. So yeah, I mean, even his great grandmother. That's that's kind of what he um, looked at himself because he was the lightest of seven children, and he said him looking at himself in the mirror, he thought about his great grandmother being raped by the slave master. So it's like, I mean, even that, all of that stuff plays a part into him. And uh, like you said, the putting in the work to be great. He only got four hours of sleep every night because he was always up reading exactly discipline and he also spoke he spoke in the first clip too a little bit about christianity um and in my opinion as an as a african-american black whatever you want to call it, melanin individual with descendants from africa um i just want to express my agreement to a certain extent of, of of how detrimental christianity as a whole can be to the psyche of a black man and, and not only it's not even so much say that there is any positivity in the book. It's just that how the majority of our people receive the message. It's always from some pastor, typically, who's asking for a bunch of money, tithe, to buy stuff he wants. While, I mean, you come to Detroit right now, there's neighborhoods where, like, maybe 25% uh, of the community is burnt down. Literally, it's just burnt house, abandoned, but the church is fine, you know, beautiful. It's got new this, new that. The pastor coming in with the next, you know, Lexus or whatever. And um, it just goes against the psyche. Again, like he's going to go in there and then turn the other cheek. It's like, well, I see the pastor's kicking my ass, but I should love him anyway. And um, again, I'm not one, I don't, I don't practice any religion, any modern organized religion, but it does go to show the difference between, say, a Muslim person who is uh, a, little more, a little more focused, a little more, uh, uh, in some way, you can even say brainwashed to a, a, to a different level of not smoking cigarettes, not eating pork, trying to eat halal, different things of that sort. Um, and um, discipline. it's about discipline again. It goes back to discipline. And so, my just to, to, to finish my uh, my comments on the two videos, um, I spoke about the discipline. I spoke about the, the 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 dedication it takes to to be great, and just the the powerful speaker that that he was, and just looking at the dictionary itself as a tool for indoctrination, a tool who controls the dictionary was a really powerful piece, looking up the definition for white and the definition for black. And, um, you know, he, you know, he saw in a clip, you know, he was like, okay, black is all this stuff. And he read white, even like pure without an innocent, without, uh, without blemish, without, it. he said, wait a minute. 
He said, white people wrote this <laughs> book. You know what I mean? Right. So it, it, it was powerful to, for him to come to that realization. And then even further, uh, the point I want to make is that um, media is, uh, ed and education itself, uh, to a certain point, is mind control. It's programming. And all programming is not is not uh is not bad per se. We have to program ourselves to uh you know, we have to program ourselves not to, you know, urinate on ourselves. You know, it's a it's a, it was a program. We went through some phases of you you know, peeing on ourselves as a kid, you know, or or whatever. You can use any another analogy or whatever you want to use, but it learning something is programming and it becomes muscle memory. So you're trying to recall all the, all the vocabulary. You're reading a dictionary every day, or you're reading a powerful documentary, listen to a powerful documentary, or reading a book. You know Marcus Garvey. And these ideologies and these things become second nature to you. And somebody asks you how you think, and you can just, man, this is this is this is what it is. You know, unapologetically, not, uh, you know. And he didn't really he didn't care about being politically correct. And that, that was really the what I got out of those two videos. You know. Yeah, and um. The new dictionary now is Google, right? <laughs> so if you Google God, for example, and go to the images, all white guys. If you go to beauty, <laughs> all white people, no black people. Uh, I guarantee you. I mean, just, I, I did it myself. Just, just on, I gotta you know, just, just thinking about, um, you know, who controls the information. Um, dreadlocks. That you would think it would be all black people, but it's not. There's more white people Brad on Pitt. there with dreads than Pitt on there. <laughs> and it's not to, you know, take a slight at anybody, but it's just that it is what that it is. sub sub I guess it's called subversive racism or racism that's you know, is not overt but it's covert. It's mm -hmm. you know, it's the getting on the elevator and then taking two steps to the right and clutching your purse. Like it's that racism that isn't overt. Um, it's not, you know, calling you the N-word, but it's that kind of stuff where, you know, taking, crossing the street when you see somebody walking. And the thing is, is who taught you to do that? Where did you, where did you learn that from? And what made you do that? And now it's one like. Of these, one of these guys look like he got a tan. It's one of them. <laughs> That's the guy in the Vatican. That's the Vatican. That's the Vatican. <laughs> right. But, but, but you see, I mean. He look oh. like he got a little bit of a tan, but it's like one out of Cause he's, 80. He's in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, was, I just had to you know just had to look that up looked up god uh and i do see nothing but uh white right. people and who who gave Even you that white guy go right. back <laughs> yeah a white guy You're like a lego man <laughs> so lego I mean, jesus and, and it, like i said it, it it is what it is this is you clearly can't debate this it's not like a why are they, you know... It's not emotion. It's just facts. I'm, right. And, and the thing, too, like, the argument would be, because it is so um, covert, is that people were like, oh, why do it matter what color God is? Like, it doesn't matter to me, but it does, because it, it puts in your head the white supremacy. Like, this, your supreme being that you worship is God. So you elevate those people to Godship uh, and above yourself. So it's like... Oh, when they kill me, I'm gonna just turn the other cheek because they're gods. I got, I got, I got one. Uh, shout out to T folk for this uh, King Chi Diallo. He uh, posted a meme. Is this a meme? Is yeah. It okay. Mm -hmm. Posted a, um, a a meme, which is a picture with information, uh, and he talked about. I, I don't know if we. Should, well, I'm already. I'm doing the intro. I guess to the next segment. Anyway, uh, about. Um, Privilege about white privilege, and we use the analogy of uh, a fish, um, a fish in the fishing bowl. And I'm just gonna read it. So just picture a you know, regular goldfish in a fish bowl, and um, not doing anything extraordinary or anything. Just 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 floating. It says fish don't know they're in water. If you try to explain it, they say water. What's water? They're so surrounded by it that it's impossible to see. Now replace fish with white people, and water with privilege, and I was just like, "Oh, mm. that's deep." It yeah. is, and that's exactly what I said. That's, that's deep. deep. Yeah. You and know, that's so, what it is. Yeah. and then you know, there was, of course, there was a whole conversation. 
you know, that went on from there, you know, people were saying he did was there was a racist comment and other people were saying I completely agree and that it is this and this and that. And some even some white people were saying that, you know, some of your posts I don't agree with, but this is, you know, this is on point. It is, you know, it is what it is. And, and I basically shared to that was is that there's most most white people are not aware of their their privilege. There is a there is a I like to believe that there's a growing few that are um, that are becoming aware and are consciously using that privilege to shift turn a turn a shift the scales and in the favor of not just black people but in favor of all disadvantaged people that have been you know uh, you know underprivileged uh, as a result of that that their privilege. And again, segueing into the racial thing, I, and this is one of my one of my things I, I'm going to express a lot about is. I feel like each of us has responsibility to our our prospective communities to raise awareness. So That's I'm right. not going to go into you know a, a, a upper class white collar place with a bunch of uh, Caucasian people and start telling them what to do and how to do it. And I don't feel like white people should try to come to our community and try to express us what we need to be doing. Like the white people should go to their people and say, look, you know, we don't find a way to harmonize or find a way to have peace and, and, and e equality with with the with the other people in our in our communities and surrounding communities these are the things that are going to happen so let's work towards it we understand that we're being privileged we have to find a way to balance the scale and we have to find a way to quit blaming them and, and always making you know this white person trying to do this and we have to get in our communities and start building and, and supporting one another um, because the more we just keep pointing and finger you know finger pointing and running in circles we're not going to get anywhere i should and so that was a uh, pretty much an, a great segue to the next segment we'll, we'll jump right into that uh, and more from uh, Malcolm X uh, after these uh, these messages. I think we had another video from Malcolm X. So and another enjoy. another excerpt too when we come back. And, and another then, excerpt. And then we'll switch over to the race. Peace and power. This is Radio Radio on uh, this episode 38. Homage to Malcolm X. Homage to the ancestors. Peace and power. You know, what I'm saying. Malcolm X. I think a lot of people are confused by the new Arabic name, El Hajj Malik El Shabazz. This is always, I've always uh, had the name on my passport, Malik El Shabazz, only I only used it in the Muslim world. Well, Hajj is a title that is given to any Muslim who makes the pilgrimage to Mecca during the official Hajj season. Well, are you, will you now use Shabazz and drop X? I'll probably continue to use Malcolm X because, and I'll probably use it as long as the situation that produced it exists. <laughs> you don't feel, you don't feel that Shabazz takes the place of X. Uh, uh, my going to Mecca and going into the Muslim world, into the African world, and being recognized and accepted as a Muslim and as a brother, uh, may solve the problem for me personally. But I uh, personally feel that my personal problem is never solved as long as the problem is not solved for all of our people in this country. So I remain Malcolm X as long as there is a need to protest and struggle and fight against the injustices that our people are involved in in this country. Are you prepared to go into the United Nations at this point and ask that the charges be brought against the United States for its treatment of American Negroes? Oh yes. Uh, oh yes. Please. I think you're right in my the audience will have to be quiet. <laughs> uh, yes. The, as I pointed out when I was in during my traveling, that nations look, African nations and Asian nations and Latin American nations look very hypocritical when they stand up in the United Nations condemning the racist practices of South Africa and that which is practiced by Portugal and Angola and saying nothing in 